Enjoy the show. Play on the tango. And Frank did a whole podcast with us with just that screen of his little icon <laughs> and a white screen. I was like, okay, Frank doesn't want to show his face today. He's being standoffish. Me and Kat were both fine with it. Like, okay, mm-hmm. we got him in. It's fine. Like, hey, it's an, he wants to show his artwork. Let him show his artwork. Yeah. <laughs> For 45 minutes, the same little icon, please. Yeah. I, you're an artist. Yeah. Show it off. We we need to see it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's uh it's awesome because uh Frank and I were just talking about uh anime and I noticed that you are in a lot of animated series. Animated. Yes, not anime yet. Yet. Yeah. So yet. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, that's a yet thing. That's a yet thing, I feel, because I'm, I'm, the first thing that pops up, obviously, is your IMDb, which is great because it shows your voice. It shows your character. So I don't have to go through 75 hours of content of like, all right, which episode was it? I don't know. Hey, it's all right there. It's really awesome. And it's you have stuff on here on IMDb, which is... You know, 2023. You're you're still very popularly working. I saw a short here, Mama and Mommy and Me in the me middle. In the middle. I was like, hey, sorry, I love that one. Well, it stands out because there's no picture on the IMDb, and I was like, mm, a short? Oh yeah, no picture. That was probably a passion project because I know my my friend Tony Brown. He is really into indie. And he does commercials and other stuff like that as well as real estate. But he likes doing the indie acting. And he said, dude, that's really one of the, some of the best stuff is doing the indie stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, mommy. Was it, was it mama? Mommy. Thank God I have a screen. Yeah, mama me and, and mommy and me in the middle. In the middle. Yes. It's actually a very beautiful yeah. book um, written by Nina LaCour. And it's about, you know, different types of families. And the little one in this book just happens to have two moms. She calls one mama and the other one mommy. And it's really about what happens when um, mama has to go um, her, I believe she's a director, so she has to travel a lot for her work. And it's about how their routine when they're all together has to shift a little bit when, you know, one one of her parents mm-hmm. is, you know, off on the road for work and how, you know, sometimes it's a little difficult because, you know, she really misses her and how um, she works through it um, with activities at home, um, how oh. it's discussed um, at school with the teacher and other children when they're missing someone they really care about. So I thought that was just, it's, so beautiful because again we talk about different types of families um it's a little black girl so you already know i'm about that um she's so adorable i I love i love the artwork in this book as well and so let me actually go ahead i i totally forgot the artist's name the illustrator kaylani juanita kaylani juanita um and so what happened was it's um i did the narration uh with uh Oh no, oh, mm, Dreamscape Media, Woo! Dreamscape, <laughs> I was like, wait, don't forget. Uh, Your IMDB is Media. long, so I'm very impressed that you, <laughs> you have such a good, uh, you have such a good memory. Thank you, because I really enjoyed this. So I, you know, I worked up my younger voice and I talked about how mommy and mommy and, you know, we have our toast with the jelly and when we go to the market and who we're saying hi to and how sometimes I'm feeling a little sad when mommy has to go on her trips and what mommy and I do when mama's away and how we kind of keep in touch until she gets home again. So it was really cool. And she's then completely they- there. Yeah. Right? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. That's yeah. so good. That's so, so good. And so they, they took the narration and, and made a video based off of the illustrations from the book. And I was like, wait, there's a video. So I'm like telling people, hey, go watch the video. There's a video. Um, 
I I actually do have a a paid account with IMDb. It is under Amazon, <laughs> so um, I should go and put a picture. I really wish the person who created the profile put a picture, but it's okay. It's okay. I can actually do it myself. No. So I'll that's awesome. Do that. <laughs> because but yeah, that's awesome that you had a passion for the project. Because mm-hmm. I was talking to Injetta Anthony of. Uh, Creatures of Necessity and Supreme Beings. Hey, like that was like ten podcasts ago. I can't believe we're that far already. Um, yeah. Two really great movies. He uh, did mm-hmm. one. He direct uh, one. He wrote and produced the other one. He produced and directed uh, and wrote mm-hmm. and really talented guy. Really great indie movies. And I, when he was talking about his casting, one of the things that he really pointed out is that all the people that he had in those films were really passionate about it. The main character of Creatures of Necessity was this amazing woman. She got a, a, a best actor for that role on in, the indie circuit. So it's, but he said like she would go into a role and you think, oh man, that's perfect. And she'd go, no, I can do it better. Having that passion for the project mm-hmm. and knowing like, mm, that wasn't my best. That wasn't my best. It's yeah. the, that really makes, especially an indie project. It does. Um, I'm just gonna clean my glasses as I <laughs> respond. <laughs> makes I, it seem sophisticated I, too. Hang it on a does. Second. You know, that's the one thing mm-hmm. us as you know actors, as you know, the voiceover talent as well. We don't just go in saying, "Oh, I can sound like this." No, we have a personality when we are you know when we're speaking when we're we're not just simply reading the lines hence let me put it out there no not just anyone can become a voice actor this is actually a career you do need to train and you need to um put in the time and sometimes you can get lonely because you know you're you're doing a lot you know you're you're training you're auditioning and i have spent a lot of years to do things that would take me seconds mm-hmm. to get down. That's the character breakdown that we have to do. Um, there are times when we do a lot of cold readings. That means I get the script right before a session. I get a script right before an audition. I have, <laughs> I can't even tell you. Sometimes it's, it's, you're thinking, oh, you get like so many minutes. You probably get a half, no, a half hour. I, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> no, honey, it's like, boom. <laughs> go you're gonna be reading um character b and section two like okay you good yeah yeah good i'm good and you you gotta go and you gotta give sometimes if if it has to be one good take and if it's if they're generous three (laughs) Uh, you know and sometimes just two but still you know you really you gotta go in there and you really have to know where you are in terms of, okay, how are you gonna execute this? What is the scene? What's going on in the scene? And even if they don't give you those specifics, you now have to create that world based off of the actions and the dialogue. Yeah. Like you just have to go in there and you'll know, sometimes you'll know right away, like, oh, this is how I gotta do it. And some, and I mean, I would like to say every time, oh yeah, I just nail it. No. Have there been moments where I've nailed it on the first try? Yes, I'm very proud of myself. Um, other times, I'm just like, like, can if 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 I'm allowed, if I can get one more take, you know, even two, that we that's great. Um, I just go in there, and now now I can pinpoint. Okay, they're not as the excitement is more like more like an internal and en- energy as opposed to outward. Um, you know, when you see an exclamation point people think they have to yell or be loud Mm -hmm. that's not true you know it's more of like the intensity of it Mm -hmm. and when you start to learn how this character would maneuver in this situation as opposed to the other characters or you know um whomever else is in the scene then you you begin to understand like oh okay how's this person when they wake up (laughs) uh how's this person when they're hungry when they're agitated when they're they're you know they're keeping a secret and they don't want it to show or when they're actually quite um what's the word i don't want to just simply say dangerous but when they can be 
diddly in a way, but come off kind of friendly, but you're letting get kind of, you know, you're getting a little peaky blinders there. Like, whoa, like, I don't think I trust this person. Mm. <laughs> so there's, 100%. There's a lot that go- yeah, there's a lot yeah. that goes into it. So yeah, if you see someone else's performance and it, it's it's not about, it has nothing to do with the ego trip. You just know how you would have done that particular role. Because, I mean, it happens. I'll watch movies. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I know I'm probably going to hurt people's feelings, but I can honestly say. Uh, when Twilight came out, not a fan. I'm okay with that. I do like That's vampires, fine. though. So no hate. Vampires, werewolves, some um, teen oh, yeah. creatures. Uh, but I just felt like I didn't really care for the acting <laughs> of a particular person. And so I actually redid the scene. <laughs> when I... <laughs> so funny, funny thing. Oh, funny thing. Okay, so let me put it out there. There you this go. Was, you know, Kristen Stewart, you know, this is when yeah. she um, is freaking out because I think one of the vampires contacted her and says they have her mom. And I just felt like the acting was very stiff. And I'm not going to blame it on her. You know, there's the direction that was given. There's a lot of factors. So, anywho, I actually redid that scene when I worked in FYE. Just to see if anyone would pay attention. And I let you know, I had a few people. One of them was about to call the police. I stopped them and I said, I apologize. Oh, wow. I'm just redoing the scene i felt like this is how it should have went down and they were like oh my god i thought your mom was in trouble and i'm like my mom's fine i hope and (laughs) what she was i said but that was just something that i i wanted to do so yes i I, they see nothing wrong in wanting to bring more life or what you felt like could have been more more oomph in certain areas but yes as you know, you know what I do. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I could definitely speak up for my colleagues too, because oh my god, they are amazing. I have so many wonderful, awesome friends in this business, um, and I I can just sit there and all oh, like I watched it, I watched it again. And I was like, that's so cool. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> and then I I learned from them too, and I think that's the best thing. You know, there's so many of us in this field. The goal is to learn and grow. So if you're just mm-hmm. like, oh, I wish I had gotten that role and you did it, watch it. Watch the performance. See what it is they were looking for that you may not have brought, and that's okay. So now you yeah. can you know, learn to incorporate that. Like, okay, it, it doesn't have to be the whole thing either. Like, just, just enough to be like, all right, I'm going to take that in because, uh, you know, you listen back. And I've done that. I've listened back to my auditions. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I see, I see why I didn't get it. And there's nothing wrong with it. So now I know. I get hey. that too. I'm yeah. e- I've been editor for Bridge Angers and Wall Hangers for five years. Okay. So ha- you have to get okay with your voice. But also, yeah. like, I have a little bit of the raspiness because I've been sick. It's it's one of those things of you understand, like, oh, okay. Like, I had, like, a cold coming on. Like, oh, God. You you get to know your voice in a, yeah. in a, in a way because the Kickstarter that – Frank and I have coming out for Caribe the Hunted. I did the voiceover work for. Um, he wanted uh, a particular voice, and I got it out there. I can pick it right up, and I'm going to have to because my hard drive that I stored it on was crapped out. Actually, Frank, I have Chris working on that. That was the back end of the story. I went over to Chris's house with a hard drive I thought was fried because my computer said it was. And it popped right on. He can go into every folder. He can turn everything on. He can watch everything. I look like a crazy person. But that's why you have an IT guy to help you out when (laughs) the computers. That's how I've been able to podcast for so long is because I've had my IT guy right here. Like, hey, what's going on? We used to bicker like a married couple in, you know, past Triforce podcast because – and they're like, did you try this? Yeah. You always tell me to try. Why wouldn't I try that first? <laughs> but it's great. It's great. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's one of those things where um, I've, I've also been sick, you know, especially when I have to get an audition out or get some lines out. And I'm like, oh, like, how do I, as long as the voice, um, yeah. if I'm sick and I already have the role, as long as the voice isn't to distort it from where I have it, yeah. you know, if you have like a particular pitch or um, especially if they have an accent because I have a natural um, Southern country accent, which you don't normally hear right now. And that's okay. That's all right. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I can turn I it know, on. Didn't know it yeah. 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 Didn't, uh, didn't hear it this matter. I had no idea. 
Now, look here. You had a No, I didn't say it wouldn't come out now. Okay? <laughs> so, um, but, you didn't say that, you know? Yeah, so I just have to make sure that it's it's the same. I don't want to make it different because then if I do a voice while I'm sick and I'm not able to replicate it when I get better, then it's like, uh... <laughs> They're like, oh, could you do the thing you did before? And I'm like, yeah, that's because I was super nasally. I'm actually really nasal right now. <laughs> but um, I'm not going to say the character because I'm under a very hard NDA, but I'm super excited. But this is going to help. <laughs> <laughs> and usually, oh, well, sometimes I have to. Well, maybe. yeah. So, but this is gonna help. Um, I am definitely okay. going to drain my nose. Um, let me see if I can, can you see this. The eucalyptus oil. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, so it's like CVS a brand, good to go. You save the money. It has to be legally. It has to be the same. If you go to the store store brands I... first, the other they legally have to be the same. Just save money. Just save the money. <laughs> So what I do is, um, I'm not going to do it now because I don't want my nose to drain, <laughs> but I, it's, it's the oil. So I just take it, I put it, you know, drip it on my, my finger and I go around my nose like this and then I just breathe it in and then I have my tissue <laughs> and I have hand sanitizer. <laughs> so I'm not touching all my equipment with uh, snotty hands, but it helps to drain. So I have a lot of little... Um, goodies in my booth <laughs> to help me get into character okay. and especially if i want to do really cute characters or um ve be very motherly i have my lamb chop lamb chop yeah uh, lamb chop and, uh, and i just let her know mommy loves you so much and i'm gonna do everything possible to make sure that we're okay so don't you worry i have your back i love you so yeah, little things like that. But yes, um, because I'm a nut. Um, but yeah, just like little things that I have in here. I always have my water. Mm -hmm. So, yes. See, it, I didn't drink a lot today. This is bad. <laughs> <laughs> liquid IV. I drink. They have sugar free yes. now. I love liquid IV. Yes, and I keep um actually uh -huh. a, a friend of mine, uh Bailey, uh she has a thermometer in her booth and i'm just like yeah that's smart i should do that yeah because it gets hot in here <laughs> oh, yeah. really hot. <laughs> but it's great in the winter oh my god you love it, I love it. yeah that's well summer, yeah. Though, of course yeah. it's just like oh, like drenched in sweat and it's like i've only been in here for 15 minutes so yeah it's a uh, <laughs> the sound well, people do that to you yeah it will <laughs> I'm just like, they're like, okay, so we have an hour long session today. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't know. And my AC sucks and it's hot in here. <sighs> but then sometimes we actually finish early. I love when we have our hour long session and we finish early because I hit my notes and everyone loves it. Um, those do. Absolutely. Are, yes. That's great. I talk a lot. And so. Oh, I love the talent. I. I I have a sore throat, so I love it when you can tell you can talk a lot. I'll just set you in a goalpost and you can run. And I'll let you go. <laughs> you know, it's um I oh, found oh, oh. the mas <laughs> the student has become the master, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, but I'm my, my mom always said that I had to get for the cab as a child. And she's like, How do you just talk without stopping? And I'm like, I do stop. I breathe. <laughs> See, that's yeah. that's really awesome because my my dad always t told me that I was Gabby to where you, you can't do this really now because everybody has like a red alert at the grocery store whenever a child is lost. But I would wander off and talk to random people in the grocery store. Hi, what's your name? My name's Matthew. And I would just wander off. He'd be running all around the grocery store. I would just talk to random people like, hi, who are you? And um it's, it's one of those things, being able to naturally talk. A lot of people, especially in podcasting, not a lot of people can really hold a conversation. You know, they have like, oh, I got a couple questions I'll ask you. And it's, you know, being able to, to hold a conversation and lead it to where you want to go, it's a, a skill that a lot of people have. <laughs> I I feel like... 
I burn out people's meters though. Um, <laughs> like I, I come in, I can come in really, I don't want us to say like hot and heavy, like, you know, sexual or anything. No, it's just, I'm, I'm at, I'm at 10 and I go to 11 because I'm excited when I talk yeah. to people. Yeah. And so, um, that happened today. Like someone that I'm cool with, they're like, Hey, Marianne. I was like, how's it going and it will just kind of ask me like oh yeah like how you doing i'm like oh great and then i'm i'm i start i realize i'm running you know i'm mm -hmm. talking about like oh you know i'm doing okay like the husband the, I, I call him my hubby <laughs> frank knows that I call my husband my hubby um and i'm like oh yeah you know he's all right i said we're gonna go see a movie and i can see it in his eyes he's kind of like i didn't really ask for all of that I just, I'm kind of like how are you how's your husband but you're like, he's just kind of like, yeah, like, where's the exit? Yeah. Where's the exit? Is she going to give me an exit? And I'm just like, and I caught myself. And I was like, yeah, so, anywho, have a good day. Sorry about that. And then I walk away. And I'm like, why do I? Like, why? I'm, I'm just, I need to just bring it back down. Not everything has to go beyond. <laughs> like, just... But I'm. That's just how I am naturally. I love. She is awesome. She is really an awesome lady, you know. Because oh. uh, we met at Harrisburg, and like, mm -hmm. I turned around and I went because they they were behind. They were sitting behind me, um, in Harrisburg, and mm -hmm. um, I just went around. And I go. Uh, I said to myself, "Wow, I thought Anna Diop was a lot taller." And I go, "Oh my God, that's Anna Diop." I go. That's far far from the uh, uh, Titans. Yeah. 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 I, I said, she had the voice. She had the look. Everything like that. I go, I thought she was taller. And I go, wow, holy moly. He says, no, no, no. I just do voiceovers. And I met her and, and her husband, Vic. And they were just unbelievably super nice people, you know. <laughs> super great uh, vendor. Uh, um, table friends, you know, so like, hey, you know, I had to. Well, I remember you because from the Great Media Comic Con. You, I remember because yeah, you, you were talking were. to my podcast partner, Chris, about uh, the RFI that pops up in the microphone. And yeah. I was talking to your husband. <laughs> <laughs> That's typically well, how it goes, you know. Yeah, first off, <laughs> We were looking, so when, before we met Frank, we were looking at all the artists who were going to be there at, um, was it was it called the Four Corners Comic Con? Or just the Harrisburg? I totally forgot. Four State. The four, four, state four State or something like that? Four State, yeah. Four yeah. State. Okay. Four Corners, Four State. Yeah. But so we were looking and we were like, oh my God. Like, yo, look at this artwork. And it's just like, okay, Frank Percy. Like, okay, that's cool. And so then a friend of ours was sitting right beside you. Is that what it was, yeah. Stephanie? Yeah. And so yeah. it it was it was brutally hot in there. The AC was just not working. It was the oh my god, it was so hot outside. Yeah. Anywho, didn't turn it on. Yeah. So we were oh. like, hey, you know what? No one's really coming in because it's hot. <laughs> um, can I say that hot as balls? Um, <laughs> say what you want. Okay. <laughs> hey, I just want to make sure I don't offend. This is how I am. And we were like, hey, how's it going? You know, like, how you doing? You know, sales, you know, coming through or whatever. And we were like, yo, we're hungry. We're going to get something to eat. Are you hungry? And we introduced Frank to some bond me. He never had bond me before. And we we're like, dude, you got to try this bond me. Never had it. It was like this big. Oh, oh my God. So fresh and yeah. so delicious. It was really good. It was so good. Yep. yep. Um, what is it? Um, the, the, the con ended around on that Sunday after that adventure at the end of it, remember? Yeah. Um, somebody hijacked somebody's car who was um, um, packing from the con their stuff into the car, and somebody jumped in their car and, oh, yeah, and like dumped. Because the back hatch was open, dumped all their product and went on like a joy ride. Oh um, my this god! This lady was Magic. so cool. The, so the it was so car, bad. Yeah. Yeah, that had gotten well, the van that had gotten stolen. Yeah. And she made boozy cakes in a jar, in the mason jar. And she, I know she's out. She um, uh, 
the Shibby's out, out, you know, I was just say out of Harrisburg, but in Philly. She, the Shibby's in Philly, so she drove all the way here with her products, and it was just sprayed all over the parking lot because you could hear the car and it i think it ended up hitting another car towards the bottom but it was crazy we were just like whoa so anyhow we were you know because we're we're on our way out we didn't want frank to just like sit at the bus stop because we didn't know we didn't want him getting harassed or anything like that so you know um you know, we offered to give him a ride. So it'd be like, hey, take a nice little joy ride around Harrisburg and, and then we'll drop you all around, around Harrisburg, man. <laughs> they showed me the crazy side of Harrisburg. There's I mean, a lot of crazy out there. I've been, yeah, it, it's crazy, all right. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I, you know? Well, like, y'all know I'm not a native here, yeah. so, but um, it was it was still really nice. I mean, like I said, Frank, really cool guy. So then, uh, you know, with that, they were, he was like, hey, I'm going to be at the Great Media Comic Con. Would you guys like to be guests? And I'm just like, sweet. Yeah. Which really helped our year because we went through a lot of stuff. Frank knows. I'm not going to talk about too much of that. But um, it was it was awesome being there. I actually met a lot of fans who knew me from. That's awesome. Uh, uh, the Mortuary's assistant and boyfriend Dungeon. I was like, wait, what? Like, I, yeah. not- I saw that on your IMDb in the, in the reel too. I'm like, oh, okay. Cool. Right. I was like, wait, what? Like, yeah. I'm not a main in any of these projects. And they were like, you. Yeah. And I'm like, me? You know, me? Like, oh. <laughs> like, I'm, how can I explain? I love the work that I do. I, it's just one of those things where, I, I do feel like it, out with the popularity, more of the like the, the headliners kind of get the attention. They're the ones who usually get, you know, invites and everything. So when I get noticed for that, it's just like, whoa, thank you. I like someone's listening. <laughs> oh, I get that. I get that feeling 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I mean, your, your voice is, you know, has, you know, is a great talent. So uh, the more, you know, that people, you know, uh, connect you with it. I mean, that's just, that just helps your brand all overall. Oh, 100%. All I saw, yeah. Like, yeah. I love you guys immediately. I mean, just like you guys would be super important. So, it's because you're good you people. Know. That's yeah. what it is. You're, yeah. you're both yeah. really good people. They literally showed me all around Harrisburg from the crazy town. All the way out to the, uh, I don't know where. You know, <laughs> where we you were know. up near. out there where oh, it, it looked like it no. ended. Okay. It looked like yeah. uh, one of those uh, horror movies, you know. Yeah. This is where it starts. I don't know. But whatever that was, all around. And then they drove me to the, uh, the, the bus station where, you know, they were so nice. They gave them a hug. They were so, so great. So. You know, kind of kept in touch with them socially and everything on the social media. And, like, they're, they're just, I mean, the two of them are just amazing. You know, they're, you know, so, so I, I can't i can't say anything more. I mean, it's just, like, they're just so, so amazing. Yeah, but that's why we highlight you on this show. Because indie cr- content creators in any form need as any much form. attention that they need. Yeah. Or, well, as much attention as possible, rather. I agree. I now I'll so some things you haven't or don't know about me yet I'll tell you I used to host anime events back in the day like back in Philly oh oh yeah no I I it was the whole shebang I had the itinerary I had the, the newsletter and I dressed up you know awesome was, when I was when I was a little smaller and you know I had my cute little outfit sign and got my hair and makeup done you know nails and so um oh. And I even had a cater, so I had, you know, different types of takoyaki, which I love takoyaki, by the way, if anyone doesn't know. Um, so I had, was it shrimp, octopus, and um, was it, what was the other one? I can't, I can't think of it now. It's very ballsy of you. I, 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 I'm sorry. Balls and beads. I, Have you not? I draw the line at octopus. No, did okay, okay. I'm telling you because it's a sentient being. Have you seen that that one sh- documentary on Netflix? Those things are yeah. aliens, bro. They're You're eating an alien. Or cephalopods, okay? That's all it is. If you lock it, it in a jar, in a mason jar, it knows oh, how to get is. out. Yes. Well, yeah. it didn't get out of the takoyaki. I'll tell you that. And they're sometimes purposely dicks, <laughs> just like dolphins. <laughs> 
Why does it hold up to go like this, you know, son of a bitch, you know? Let's do that again. You, you know, know what? Okay, first off, let, let, we're going to talk about the animals being dicks. Um, orcas, <laughs> but, I, I mean, unless they're, they're getting the yachts, then they're doing us a service. But have you seen how they treat it? They, they treat other, <laughs> like, uh, sea creatures. They're rude. They are slapping octopuses in the air. They're just, like... No uh, hitting. <laughs> I'm just like, guys, stop being like that. But apparently, <laughs> dolphins have their own issue. So you know what? I'm here for the whale. I'm here for the whale. Yeah. Well, you know, the killer whale is, you know, it's just that. It is a killer. It's got two reasons why yeah. they call it that. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like people who like panda bears. Guess what? what? It's still a bear. Yes. <laughs> you got to keep food in that thing's mouth. Otherwise, oh, speaking about bears, <laughs> we just watched Cocaine Bear. Oh, how was that? <laughs> oh, it was awesome. It was, was awesome. It was, it was, it was a perfect bear movie. Like from beginning to end, it, it was from from what was it in 1985, right? That it felt like an 80s movie. It's for awesome. Real. And I was like, first off, um, hat off to Elizabeth Banks. She filmed it. And direct it. Did she did it, did all that? You got to strike while the iron's hot because I remember that story coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, it came out in the news, and it was like, "Hey, cocaine bear! This bear found a bunch of cocaine," and I was already like, "That's oh my god, <clears throat> that's not a situation I want to be in <laughs> at all." Every, every scene was just awesome. It just everything flowed. It fit. It wasn't. I know people are like, if, I, I won't say too much because then people are like, are you serious? There's a bear that did cocaine. And I'm like, well. A lot. Bear... It smelled like a ton. <laughs> like, he... it, did, it did an excessive amount of cocaine in that movie. Like yeah. a <laughs> <laughs> but I, mean, like, I will. No bail, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no bails, no, no dime bag. No, but there is a scene. I don't want to say anything unless you guys want to watch it. But there is a scene where it was very quick and I was just like, Nice, nice. It it does involve the bear, just the bear, and I'll leave it at that because I don't want to ruin it. But please take the time, watch it, and you know, rest in peace, Ray Liotta. Um, and oh my goodness, what was that man's name? He always says cheat. Hold on. Um, I'm gonna that now because now I gotta look up IMDb. He's he actually he was in a play. He was he was not in a play. He was in Death of a Salesman. On Broadway, so hold up. I need to get this man's name. He is amazing. So while I'm talking to Tina, tell go me. ahead. <laughs> there we go. I'm, I'm like, interested I'm now. I'm, I'm involved. I'm like, who is he? I, I mean, Death of a Salesman. I know the play. I know Broadway. Isaiah Whitlock Jr. Oh. Isaiah Whitlock Jr. Yes, he is. Oh, my goodness. First off, wonderful actor. I love his, uh, the, his voice. He has this particular high pitch. And he could come off kind of like soft, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you right now, he 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 always plays the role of somebody where he's going to say the word. <laughs> like he's always going to be in a messy situation. <laughs> but no, he was he was awesome in it. Uh, the one chick that I all I just call her Felicity. And I know that's wrong. I shouldn't just call her Felicity. But that's how I first saw her back in the day. Carrie okay. Russell. Oh, yeah, yeah. Carrie yeah. Russell. Mm. Yes. But, you know, she's been doing, like, the Americans for, like, what, seven years now? Not more. She's been for a while, yeah. I only checked that show out, like, maybe a season of it. And I was like. I don't, I don't watch it. I just know she's in it. I'm just, you know. Yeah. I mean, it. it looked like a good premise for a show. So she's got something. <laughs> Apparently, a lot of people like it if they got up to seven seasons. So, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, the kids were great in it. <laughs> Just kids in it. They were they were great. Um, but no, so solid solid movie. Um, I unfortunately wasted my time watching um, uh, a haunting in Venice. I did not know it was part of um, a series. I, I don't think I really care for. It was it Agatha Christie? Okay. I don't think I really care for her. Um, like the mystery that. novels and. Yeah, I, I, and I don't think I really like that, but I can tell you what would make up for it if you watch The Fall of the House of Usher. Okay. Makes up for all of that. That's all I have to say. I love all Edgar right. Allan Poe. He is um, yeah. one of my top authors. 
and oh, yeah. they, they did they did it justice with that. I just just want to put that out. Very so good I storyteller. Love- I mean, if we're talking about classics, Edgar Allan Poe was brilliant. I actually did not. I never liked his his um detective character. I mm. could not stand his detective character. Uh, what was the name of the one? The heart and the floor. Um, oh, Telltale Heart. Yes, yes, yes. that was know. one. I was like, dude, that. Ooh, I started getting anxiety. I'm like, oh man. Wait, so did but did you watch the fall of the House of Usher? I didn't. No, I'll have to. Okay. I I love hey. Edgar Allan Poe, so I'll have to. I am not. I'm not gonna ruin it. Now, I thought I read a lot of Edgar Allan Poe's works, honey. No, this is what I read. This is what he has. Now, I oh, yeah. do have the book. Um, the the full collection of all his uh, short short stories yeah. and poems. Okay. I I did not realize I didn't read. <laughs> I hadn't read so much. But anywho, the show encompasses a lot of you know um, of the main titles. You know, like you said, Telltale Heart. Um, the task of um, I've been saying a Montalado, but that's incorrect. It's actually Spanish. So, um, cast but, of Monte Cristo. No, no, no. That's what? Montel- no. no, it's something else. No, it's like, yeah, no, no, no. That's I heard cast, and I was like, I know no. something with cast. I'm like, no, 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 no that wasn't it. <laughs> that wasn't it at all. Montelado, but it's not a Montalado. It's um, yeah, Ami- 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 yeah. something like that. But yeah, and so anywho, <clears throat> it, it really flows. The story flows a lot. And again, whoa, what's his name? Michael, Michael, um, oh no, this is going to beat me. Michael Clark. He's the director. He also did the the House of Hunting yeah. Hill, the, the Hunting of, of Blythe House, um, Midnight's Mass. Uh, I'm just not gonna do this today. My brain, my brain died. <laughs> oh my god, what's his name? What's his name? Mike Flanagan. Flanagan. Okay. Mike, Mike Flanagan. Flanagan. Look at his works. It's really good. Also, I'm putting Gerald's Game out there as well. Gerald's yeah, Game is great. Yes, I did from the trailer. Oh. From the trailer. Click. You did not know any of that that was going to happen. Click. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know. And I'm. I mean, I'm a huge. That was a. What was it? Stephen King. Stephen King. I'm yeah. a huge Stephen King fan too. And I'm just like, whoa, what the hell? Right? <laughs> wow, yeah. man. And okay. one of the one of the things that uh, it was after. Actually, it was probably during um, the time I was writing Chronicles of the Hunt, yeah. which is the backstory <laughs> for Frank's comic, Caribe. Uh, we're gonna be plugging Caribe a lot on the show. So, <laughs> um, when I was writing the backstory, mm-hmm. I also started listening to Stephen King's book on writing, and okay. he just goes through his life, and you know, he doesn't say how much cocaine and alcohol he does, but he does say he does mention the alcohol. Um, he goes through his life, and he's just like, I don't know how to write a uh, write a book on writing. But here you go. But it is a brilliant book. A brilliant book. And it just, when he was talking about Carrie and how he came up with these Mm. concepts and everything, I think it's something that everybody who is interested in writing needs to listen to because he goes through his process and you're just like, oh, well, I can adapt that into my way. And so many podcasts are blurring together. It's been a long day at work. Um, I was telling to somebody and they were like, well, no, that's how you do it. You know, you mm-hmm. you find out how you work specifically, and then it helps you in the end because oh, I know how to do this in my way. Yes, you know, um, I'm just gonna take that back into voiceover. Mm-hmm. Yes, you have to find what works for you. Some people are able to um, digest the material that we're getting you know, the script, the yeah. story, and it's just like, ah, oh, and this is how they would execute it. But it's okay if everyone has a different way of doing what they do to get themselves ready. But I I know coming into this business, I've been, I started my voiceover journey back in 2010. And I didn't start landing roles until 2014. Okay. Okay. So a good four years into the game. Yeah, I mean, I've landed, I landed some roles, but I would say my my fir- my first paid role wasn't until 2014. Awesome. And it was just kind of like, oh, you know, you just make a voice and then just go in. But 
the more training I was getting and I'm understanding, I had to get very comfortable with the sound of my voice. I'm like, oh, yes. I sound like that. Right. Once you get, yeah, once you get past that, it gets a lot easier. Stop thinking about, oh, I sound weird. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You'll, you'll, you'll be fine. The first time I had yeah. that kind of, I had, uh, because mm-hmm. I said it in an uh, interview podcast I just did mm-hmm. with Corey Castle and Carl Park and Delco After Dark. Um, uh, I, I, my brother and I used to do, we used to call into a local radio station, WMMR, mm-hmm. and it, it was back around 2001. We were Chuck and Charlie Stoney. We were just driving through our neighborhood one day, and we saw our neighbors down the road. They had their name on the mailbox, and it said the Stonians, or the Stoners. <laughs> and we always did this funny voice, and we would talk, like, oh, no, I left my trash can down, or something like that. And then we had the idea, like, why don't, why don't we use these voices, and why don't we go and call the radio station? So we called for, like, a solid year, and it wasn't until... They had like a, they had an event and they offered us to come out and stuff. We got into studio. So when we first got in the studio with Raz in the afternoons, and mind you, I'm in the eighth grade. <laughs> so I, 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 we go in studio and we do those voices the entire time we're in studio. And then okay. once we get to the end, it's just Raz, my brother, and myself. And my brother goes to Raz. He goes, he actually, you know, we're not, we're not stoners. We actually just make this funny voice. And Raz was just like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> but he liked it. And okay. we kept going in the studio every Friday, every Friday. And he would give us mm-hmm. these bits. We did, you know, stuff with, you know, a whole bunch of different bits. But I remember him saying, hey, that's too much Matt, not enough Chuck. There we go. And you want to know why? Because you're not just putting on a voice. You are now presenting this personality. You you notice how when you were doing that voice for me, what mannerisms that, that you did for that that you don't normally do? I notice you're like, Ugh. you know, your hands are yeah. kind of the hands, like, kind of body. The hands yeah. get into it. You get a little bit of the lisp and, mm-hmm. you know, it, 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 it's all the years you're doing it. It's natural to me. Me and my brother crack up all the time just doing these voices randomly. And. It's, I can turn it on and turn it off, but it's the, that kind of fun all throughout the years of creating all these comedic bits. And we got mm-hmm. like Tasty Cake. Hey, we want those Stony Boys to do this ad for us. We just put this green <laughs> filling in the Tasty Cake, you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. And we drove around and we kept on finding things that shouldn't have green filling in it, like hot dogs or, uh, you know, Susie Q's. Because that was wrong. It's not tasty. Unless, you know? unless you guys are doing, like, I don't know, promo for um, Toxic Avenger or something. <laughs> that would have been. Or, you know, yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Let's get the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so. <laughs> but it was fun doing that voice <laughs> and acting. Even the little bit I did with Frank recently. It's it's fun being able to be a different character. Because it almost goes into, like, LARPing or, D, you know, D&D. Yes. It goes into that, I am this character. Mm-hmm. All of that, I'm telling you, it's, and that's what I'm saying, as voice actors should think, oh, it's just the voice, no, it's the body, it's the movement. Um, I I did as, um, uh, the, 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 ah, I can't talk today, the latest podcast I'm in, um, it's called The Dead from Bloody FM, and um, the, um, oh my goodness, I am not going to, George A. Romero Foundation, oh. and so it's called, um, ephemeris and essentially you know well romero was more like ghouls as opposed to zombies so i said ghouls in space but i will say i do voice a character and i also voice some ghouls or you know zombies however you want to say it sure and so there's this point where i've i've always wanted to do those types of voices i think they're like you're a girl you want to do cute sounding voices like Mm -hmm. yeah and i'm like oh no like Get get me in there. So it's just like, mm. and then they were like, okay, less breathy. So they didn't want a lot of breath. They're like more more mouth. <laughs> and I was like, okay, more mouth. So it's just like, What's... that's so interesting because like... you know <laughs> you're you're using different parts of your voice and your body because like 
you have to get down deep in here. Yeah. Or you and have I'm to not... get up high and you want to get in the, in the higher range. You have and to be able to have to... a range. Yes. And having that range, I don't hurt my voice while doing it. I think a lot of people, a, a lot of folks who are still new or still learning, they hurt their voice, they strain their voice trying to do it. Everything I did did not hurt me. It's because it's not supposed to strain. You're not. I'm telling you, there, there. You can get these, these nodes on your, you know, like these, like on your lymph nodes and everything. You don't want that. I just said lymph nodes on your nose, but <laughs> you know what I mean. You, well, Might be the title of the podcast. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, and it can, it can be detrimental to your health. And the last thing I want to do is destroy my instrument. So I'm always trying to find a way where I can always recreate the sound. I, even though the sound that I did for you is not exactly what's happening. Um, <laughs> but I also don't want to spoil too much. But, um, but I, I learned and I remember I, was, I was, had to do a screaming session. I had to yell and scream. And I sat and practiced for a while. And I did so for quite some time. And then I sat and I listened and I breathed. And I was like, wait, I didn't hurt my voice. And they're like, wait, you can scream and yell without hurting your voice? Yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> Not everybody's like Goku to where that guy's like popping blood vessels and, you know, all that. He's had problems. I think health problems I've read from trying to get those yells to go Super Saiyan. Like, this man should have went Super Saiyan long ago. Yeah. Because, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, you, it's because it is a lot of force. And I mean, I, I understand um, with characters like, you know, like Goku and, and the such. Um, it's just like you really have to bring it bring it up you i'm not i'm not gonna say anything against it because i've i've done yelling and i would say the closest i've really done with that is um chayoma which is based off of the comic by the same name chayoma mm -hmm. uh, from uh, uh, mm, peter chizoba daniel <laughs> you're so much so better at names than me so <laughs> much better I had to watch somebody else's podcast to figure out how to say Injetta Anthony. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, mm, I I grew up in a, a multicultural town uh, between two military bases, so oh, okay. I think I've I, <laughs> I've learned to, and also making sure people say my name correctly. I'm like, no, it's not Marianne. Please don't do that. And it's not yeah. Mary. It's not hyphenated. Like, please, please stop. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I had a I have an aunt Mary, and I know Marion all too well. She is not as pleasant as you. I hope she's having I'm leaving that in. Because <laughs> I don't want her to hear this. I'd be like, oh. mm -hmm. um, But yeah, so yeah. it's just like, there, there's a voice that comes with So I do do an accent with it. Um, this accent, I'm hoping, gets me to become Storm someday. Oh, I hope so, man. I hope so. <laughs> so um, Especially with yeah. What If. They're always looking for people who are available. <laughs> Let's see. So... So the voice that I do, she, you know, I have to drop it back and they put on yes. the, um, you know, the pseudo, um, I'll just say Wakandian accent. We'll just go with that. Sorry, don't get in trouble. Um, actually, she's actually of North African descent. Not yes. Yes. She marries into Wakanda. Giggity. No, 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 I'm not saying the storm's Wakandian. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying the voice that I put on. The voice that I put on. A word for it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. It, just so I can be like, no. Uh, this is queen, uh, that whole queen, uh, Angela Bassett, you know, uh, oh. oh, Rwanda, you know, uh, that that whole, I mean, that is kind of storm a little bit, you know. I get, I'm thinking, you know, uh, she should have uh, been that well, American. I think, you know, I think uh, that comes uh, from like the '97 yeah. X-Men because that's where you really heard storms. Yeah. Like, I so, didn't know her name was Aurora until I heard it on X-Men. I'm like, oh, Aurora okay. Aurora Monroe. Okay. Yeah, so her name is Aurora Monroe. And I love, I love her so much. I want to voice her so badly. So it's one of those things. Me that too. I, that was good. I've, <laughs> I've actually, I've done some fan work of it. Um, the one that you'll actually be able to find it is, what's it called? Um, Fantastic Four. It's a fan, fan documentary. And so I actually do voice her. And it's the scene where the thing thought her hair was fake. Ah, yeah. yeah. You know, she's like, oh, no, so sweet. So sweet. Go ahead. Hold my hair. <laughs> See? This, you know, so in a, in a, you know, of course, you know, it becomes, um, oh my God, to tell her, like, she's very That's so Ben Grimm. 
<laughs> That's so Ben Grimm, oh, by the way. Like, you know, she, she's like, are you, are you serious? You think this comes out of my hair, huh? 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 This is not a wig. Do you not see this? Oh, you know, it's just like, so it's like, <laughs> so I'm incorporating, you know, I have one, one of my best friends um, is Nigerian. And so when she gets hyped, her accent comes out very strong. And so I'm listening. And so my goal is, my goal is not to imitate. I do actually want to incorporate, um, like, actual um like phonetics in terms of how i speak you know uh little things uh and it can also be um you know west indie or caribbean as well as like uh like the mouth so like the suck. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> and so it's it's again it's not to make fun of or anything like that i'm like no I'm no it's being creative. accurate and that, yeah it, that's absolutely. the thing that i think fans have really lost it's do you want this to sound accurate if you do, you have to incorporate techniques like this. And it's not necessarily something against that person who's just yeah. trying to make a paycheck and pop I, them fruity pebbles on the but, counter, bud. That's it. I will say in terms of authenticity, though, if it if the person is, um, we'll, we'll just put it, if they're Swana, I, as soon as I say I see that the character Swana, I don't. I'm like, that's not me mm. because that I'm not. I'm black. That's just how it is, honey. I'm black. Now, I know my roots are in Africa somewhere. I just wish I knew which country in Africa. Because Africa is a continent, just in case people don't understand that. Well, I mean, technically, everybody came from there. Yes, but my, my melanin is tight. I'm, 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 not, I'm not talking to town. I'm just saying, hey, if you trace it back far enough, we all came from there. <laughs> A little while later. <laughs> I know everyone's yeah. got a different little melanin up here, so I'm not gonna. Look, some people love Miami, okay? Are they moving from Miami? No. You just put up with the hurricane, it'll go away. That's it. All right. So some people don't move. I'm good. I'm good. No, that's a. Yeah. That's a look. That's a location of a different source, sweet pea, and that's in Florida. Yeah. That's if you want me to move down to Florida, you gotta pay me a lot of money. Because I love the Northeast. We got these Appalachian Mountains, which are great for weather. It's, Especially it's North Carolina. North love you guys. Love no, you guys in North Carolina. It's Pennsylvania Northeast. Oh, we're the Keystone State. That's that's like the keystone of that Northeast. But if you don't, you know, you ignore New York, which is actually kind of bigger. But we got more roads. We got more roads. Well, you know, you know I'm a Jersey girl, right? Oh, I knew you were from another country. It's fine. <laughs> It's fine. Jersey is a whole other country. It's like Texas. You guys are just like Whoa. absorbed into the U.S. And you're like, look, these are different people. They're great. We're gonna let them in, and it's fine. Look, my one of my best, one of my best friends is from the country of Jersey. I went and visited him not too long ago, and his sister, Alo, of A Plus Catering and Events. Really great. Really great. I don't gotta get out of my car when I have to get my gas pumped. No matter what time of the year, I go to my Wawa. I know what a roundabout is. Okay. Oh, like, my so. favorite thing was seeing a New Jersey person at one of my gas pumps when I was at Wawa. Because one of them, they got mad and they stormed in. I've been waiting 20 minutes to get gas. I'm like, oh, all right, they, pump it yourself. They know they're in a different state. They know they're in a different state. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, okay. <laughs> Like, look, I lived in Philly for five years, and I was mad as hell. I'd be like, oh, it's cold. Look, that is exactly why I'm bitter. I'm bitter because you people have that service mandated. Like, no, 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 We're not letting you pump your own gas, okay? There's a diesel, and there's a regular petroleum. You, we're not having that problem. Here's Craig. It's his fault. Give it a month. Give it a month and seven days. It's gonna be the it's gonna be the first day of March. If not, wait till the first day of spring. Go to the Rita's water ice. Go get you some water ice, honey. Mm -hmm. And just chill. Oh god, gelati. Or gelato. My apologies. Or gelato. That's what they call it, gelati. But but still, it's it's just one of those things where I'm just like I'm glad that I've had the experience. I've I'm born and raised in Jersey, lived in Philly, mm -hmm. uh lived in Boston. <laughs> Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I lived in Boston. Okay. Uh, so seven years. 
years? Yeah, so seven years, almost eight. And then um, um, the hubby and I lived in China for a year. That's awesome. How'd you get to China? Um, he got a job. He's a he's a footwear designer. Ah, and, yeah, okay. Yeah, he did a job with a company out there, and that was an experience. Um, my dad yeah, worked like, over there for three months uh, uh, and he he's an engineer so he designed a machine he had to tell him how to put it back together so the main way he would communicate with him is he would draw mm-hmm. you're like yes it's, oh! really, I, I don't like when people try to make it seem like oh well they speak a different language I'm like yeah and you also speak a different language from them so calm down <laughs> but you know there are things that are universal so whenever I was, because, you know, we were living there. I was going shopping. You know, we were paying bills and everything. So whenever I would go to the market and, yeah, it was awesome. Um, Bathroom was, now. Yeah, that yeah, way. yeah. Well, there, were, there were translators on the phone. So what I would do is if it's something I didn't feel like translating or I had, like, a bad connection, which is, believe it or not, very rare, even where we were, um, I would, you know, I would say, ni hao, ni hao ma. You know, it's like, hi, how are you? Especially if they've seen, seen me before. Yeah. And so the, the head, not, not the chef, the, the head butcher, when I would go to the market, the head butcher, he would come in and, you know, he's this big guy. And I would point to the meats that I wanted. And so I would let him know if I wanted it uh, chopped up. I would let him know if I wanted to grind it. Like, so, because I was, I was, oh my God, I was hangering for a burger and i wanted some ground beef so i found some good chuck for him to, to grind uh, so that was nice um but yeah it was it was awesome and so even though we didn't speak the same language we understood each other through the you know like the camp to minds and everything and it was yeah. just really really cool, really cool. and i i've met a lot of people yeah. essentially bougie assholes you know it was like real wives of um, Shao Men, essentially. <laughs> um, and, which is off the Southeast Coast. So it's you can see Taiwan. And so I guess the assumption was, oh, you know, we're living in a you know, nice, nice, nice community. community. And my husband's working in the, in the big corporate office. And I would ask Snotty. But I'm like, whoa, first off, I'm a person just like they are. I said, they're working to provide for themselves, for their family members, just to live life. So why would I treat anybody any differently? Because, oh, I happen to live here. I have never lived in a gated community in my entire life. That's like a... So when I lived in one and we had groundskeepers and everything, for me, I'm like okay they're people too like why would i treat anybody any different i come out and i'm saying hi i'm going on my jog and everything and they at first they're a little scared um it could be one because i'm I'm a foreigner you know they don't really see black people there um (laughs) but i did find black people black people are very white but they are there yeah (laughs) they are there and so um on the so i was learning um Oh, my Chinese is like red. The most I remember still is like, like I said, ni hao, ni hao ma. Uh, definitely, uh, oh, how much, to say how much. Uh, oh, do xiao, do xiao. Uh, so whenever I would go shopping, they love, they, they will follow you in the store. That's because they want to help you buy. They want to help you buy things. I yeah. usually get followed in the store here in America because I get the thing I'm going to steal. So it was really nice to get <laughs> the opposite yeah. effect. It, oh, man, it was awesome. I could walk around at night over there. and They're all there. salespeople, though. That's what it yeah. is, because hey, I would get a lot of what? Chinese and Japanese people, and it's that kind of market set place. Like you don't accept the first price, you it's always nice. go nice. for the second one. It wasn't always. It wasn't really like a haggle. It depends on now. Believe it or not, in Walmart they had that. They had a they had a fish market in Walmart. So you hear yep. them yelling, you know, like saying the prices and all this stuff, and they had mm-hmm. the boxes. It was. I was like, whoa, look at this this experience is so cool. Like, cause for me, I'm like, I some things I see um on TV and in other things, mm-hmm. I feel like people kind of exi- when I I don't want to use the term exaggerate. It's more of they try to make it more negative. And I'm like, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. First off, the way of life here, if it's different from yours, just say that it's different. Don't try to say, mm-hmm. ugh, you know, that's weird. Whenever somebody did that, I corrected them. I said, do not ever hmm. Don't freaking do that. Just don't do that. Because that's rude as hell. If I'm eating something that I know I like, and someone's like, ew, like, why are you eating that? Mind your fucking business. Mind your business. Don't well, the biggest thing is fish. People hate when you cook fish. But guess what? I like it. 
Maybe I want to eat some tilapia. Hey, look here, honey. We got some tilapia. We got some haddock. We got some salmon. Um, some trout. Hey, some sunnies and some whitings. Mm -hmm. Where I'm from. Um. Oh my God. Over there, I it, there were so many different types of fish. We went to a fish market. Which oh, Frank. One of these days, we're gonna share the pictures. You ever come back over here, honey? We got so many pictures to share with you. We went to the fish market. And you know the the ocean there is just there's so many more different types of sea creatures. <gasps> All I will say, I had conch for the first time. A conch, okay. conch, yeah, I had conch okay. for the first time. And I know people are like, "Oh, you can go to the islands and eat that." I know, but we wasn't in the islands. We was in China, and so I had it barbecued. Oh my god! That's so oh really? Oh yeah. I, I, I love seafood, by the way. I love seafood. Okay. Now they did have these crazy looking shrimps. They were scary. They don't. It don't. It didn't look right. It didn't even look like a shrimp. It was a shrimp, and I refused to eat it because I didn't. It didn't look like a shrimp. Yeah, it just yeah. was so creepy looking. No, yeah. Like a I, I like go. Oh, that's a hard pass. That's a negative yeah. on that. One. Negative on that one, um, Ghost Rider. No. Negative, but, absolutely. I'll, but look, look. If anybody want to take me to a seafood boil, no, or um. Red you know, when, when, they're, when they're messing with when they're messing uh with um certain like toxic things and like you know i know in korea they have uh an octopus that they skewer on a chopstick and you swallow it and this thing is barely barely oh. dead and it's fighting its way out no thanks much no, you're thanks. trying to yeah, you know, more, that's, like, a, that's a, I believe that's more like a delicacy. So that I don't think that's as common as you would think. It's good, they can a, keep it. It was, it was in a it was in a somewhat yeah. small restaurant. It was not in a really fan. It was just friends, uh, kind of uh, getting together, and they had. And I go, no. Although, yeah. if you could do that in America, to where you could just cook something really weird, and then. Be, just pop it in a touristy spot and then just watch all the foreigners walk in there and be like, oh, look at them. No, <laughs> you know? I wouldn't. I, I don't know. To me, I feel like, well, first off with America, we have so many different types of food. Oh, yeah. We got everything. I know. And I know people are like, oh, this is good old American food. And I'm like, American where, though? Because I grew up. It's all borrowed. It, it is. It really Borrowed and changed. What do we, we, have a, we have a hamburger. That's what we got. We yeah, borrowed the hot dog. American staple. No, it's not. It's German. Yeah, yeah. hamburger. You got Frankfurter. German. Sauerkraut. German. I don't eat sauerkraut. Um, but, <laughs> but Nobody I does. Think it's about, fine. I'm from, I'm, so being from Jersey, I love Italian food. Mm. Like, believe it or not, Italian food is mm -hmm. up there. And, and I say Mexican food, and I, I, as I get older, I'm realizing what's actually more Mexican food than mm -hmm. what was presented. And I'm like, I need to see the owner and the folks in the kitchen. Yeah. Mexican. Like, for <laughs> Absolutely. Me, like, I know. Absolutely. I want yeah. the food. You guys got a window? You got a window? I want to be able to pop my head in there like, exactly. okay. So it's, it's one of the Jorge. things where... When we were over there and we were visiting our friend's place, and they were kind of worried because they were like, oh, well, the food wasn't what you would find, I guess, quote unquote, in a restaurant, like an international restaurant. And I'm like, that's fine. I said, whatever it is that you eat in your house, we want to we want to know. So his mom, oh, my God. So, yeah, his name is Connor. Really want, oh, my God. Blessed man. He was also the, um, I had some chance later. But we just we it's like it's weird for me to say that because he wasn't like just our chance like he was our friend and we helped yeah. each other out a lot and so we went over to his yeah. house he cooked and his mom cooked oh man oh my god homemade yeah, that's sausages. so great wow. um oh, oh. Honey, had that shrimp on. Oh, oh my god <laughs> and the season everything was so delicious and i know they were worried and i was like no do you not understand I want to know what brings you joy. This is the food that brings you joy. I don't want to go to a restaurant and 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 I'm sure that they might have some some classes and some, you know, um what's the the term I'm looking for? You know, like just like certain foods, but I'll tell mm -hmm. you right now, I I my husband and I we are like starving for 
what we ate over there. And so I know people are like, oh, you just ordered some Chinese food. I'm like, no. I think it's I down to the mala. ingredients, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Because. I need some mala in my life. Everything's really <laughs> processed over here to where over there. It is. Do you know? Let me tell you. Let me tell you, Mike. I lost weight. We lost weight in China. We ate so much food and lost weight. First off, it's hot and we wow. lost a lot. But we lost weight. I I I went over there. I was like 175 pounds when we went over there. I put the weight back on. But when we came back, before we came back, I was down. I was down to 164. And I was like, oh my gosh. I look at these pictures and I'm like, yo, we came back to the States. There is sugar and salt and everything. I am yeah. so disturbed. It is so wrong. And it was, I mean, I blew up. I, I don't want you want to show you the pictures. I'm so upset. I'm well, like, you, you know about that whole sugar debacle that happened. The sugar industry put it on saturated fats and fatty foods and to point the blame away from sugar. Like, no, 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 no. Keep eating sugar. It's fine. Sugar's great. Shovel it in your mouth. I'll, I'll shovel it in your mouth. You need somebody to shovel? I'll shovel it in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Eat more. Think, think about it. Think about it. You think about these these massive companies, you know, it's salt and sugar. So they get angry and when everything. they don't need to eat healthy and not put salt and sugar and everything. And they're like, oh, how dare they say that? Do you know how much money we're going to lose? You have to put salt and sugar in your food or your food is going to taste awful. And also our sales are going to go down. We might have to fire yeah. people and I won't get my APR for the year. You know, but Heavens. no, guys, please make sure you're eating salt. And sugar, your food's gonna taste awful. No, it's not. Your food's gonna taste amazing. You gotta know what actual bread tastes like. Oh man. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not the... It is so awful. So, little things I try to incorporate, like how we ate over there, and it was it was different because we they don't normally have stoves, there's no stoves, it's just like heat plates, and <laughs> and yep. Like you have like the top of, or essentially, like an oven. I say, I say, a, I guess a stove, but not an oven. I guess that's what I need to say. So there's the stove tops, but not the like oven. Like a, a toaster oven? You can't, you can buy those, but they don't. But when, when, when we got our apartment, it was the stove top, but not, you know what I mean? But not mm. an oven. Okay. So, we, so you it, just got it, that stuff. Was it like a propane or was it like electric? Um, it was electric. It was electric. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. all right. Well, that makes sense because they're like, yeah. we can make this. So work we had now. that. We had a rice cooker. We had a blender, and I, I, I got a metal pan, this huge metal pan, and it took about two and a half months, but I seasoned the hell out of it. Um, and I was cooking up lamb, honey. Uh, oh, I, I love lamb. Oh, oh yeah. There's a reason why we kept those the, them around. It wasn't just for the you know for the fleece. They are delicious. <laughs> Oh so my god. The only so thing good. about cooking lamb is that the fat is in between the meat. I don't care. So whenever it's the, uh, the best part. I'm, I wish I wish I could there we go. Oh it was about it. this giant. I gotta get lamb now. Funny. I gotta tell mom gotta it's tell Costco to week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got a Costco oh, week? Oh, yeah, it's a Costco week. Yeah. Free plug <laughs> there. <laughs> I love that lamb, man. That lamb is but delicious. Yeah. But I would, I would always have a meat and a vegetable. And so mm -hmm. the market, we had a market in that, like I said, we live in the gated community. So we had a, um, a market, um, like a, look, some shops along yeah. the way um, in the front. So I went down and I would get like here. And the vegetables are so big. Like the vegetables and the fruit. I had orange, like a normal size, like an orange this big. I thought it was a grapefruit. It's like apples, giant apples, carrots, thick as hell. Um, cucumbers, peppers of all kinds. So I would always get fresh peppers and, uh, like in cilantro. No, I don't have the gene that makes it taste like soaps. I eat cilantro. Um, you know, get scallions and it's um, a thing, it's a thing, yeah, it, it is a thing. And I get potatoes and everything. So I was always incorporating um, vegetables with the meat, and then of course, you know, we would have our rice. And, um, it was some, I just felt like I had never properly eaten that healthy. You know, unless I have a bond me. Uh, <laughs> and, or, or have a Korean bond. Bringing it back around. Bringing it back around. Yeah. Circle. Because it's, 
it just it just felt amazing. But yeah, energized, healthy. It's mm-hmm. great for the boys. It's great for the body. It's great for the mind. Um, I just actually had a very delicious dinner. Um, but it was Italian sausages tonight. <laughs> yeah, the hot kind. Okay. And so. I know I'm getting into this voice, so I guess I'm just going to go there. So, yeah, so the mm. hot kind. Well, that's how you get voiced as Harley Quinn, okay? Oh, you know, yeah. I love to voice Harley Quinn. I mean, that's if, that's if anybody actually that's wants to that. You, you know, like I don't know anybody. Any, wow. Yeah. Any yeah. black girls voices Harley Quinn? He know her up. You know, like, there was that, uh, there, they did that uh, Harley Quinn Joker podcast with uh it was I, f- I forget the voice actress's name who did harley quinn but she did a really good job it's on uh spotify all the podcasts out there all right. um but it's really really good and joker podcast mm-hmm. oh, let's, see. let's see what's going on and it's voice? it's like her uh like separating away from joker oh. and joker being <gasps> it's really good that's great, because, you know, you don't want to be in a toxic relationship. It's just, it's not healthy. <laughs> not healthy at all. You know what? Christina Rich? Christina Rich? Yes. Yes. <gasps> oh, and Justin oh, Hart is playing Batman. Batman? Batman? Mm. Mm. Oh, a lot of them have really great voice cast, and that's why, like, there's a couple of those, um, like, superhero podcasts that are out there that it, you can just listen all the way through. There's also fan, um, uh, fan, you know, fan ones to where this is all rights reserved. This is based off of these comics. They have that long legal disclaimer, but of they're course. still really good and it's something to be out there. It is. And so I will say there's nothing wrong. <laughs> it's like, can I get out of the voice now? Here we go. Oh, <laughs> getting out. And I understand so, that so much. Sometimes you just get into it and you keep doing it and you're like, oh, man. You know? And so I think a lot of people think, oh, yeah, you know, you can't stay in that voice forever. Actually, I can do this all day. All day. A lot of people don't understand at all. You know, and there's nothing wrong with doing podcasts. Podcasts have landed me in doing commercials and doing characters and other works. And I know folks are like, oh, so what's in it in podcasts? Look here. Now, average $75 minimum is what you would like to do for a podcast. Minimum. And then, I mean, $150. That's really what it is. $150 for a whole hour. And that could be for a live session. But again, that's people's budgets are different. So I would say it's whatever you can budget out. Hire your folks. And if that's a job that you know you like to do for fun, go ahead. See what your rates are. But if that's not a thing for you, Definitely don't crap on it because podcasts get you work in so many other places. So I'm just going to slip out of that now. And so but that's a good point. Podcasting <laughs> is that new medium that you can actually get um, a lot of good people into. I didn't think I'd have any, but any of the amazing people I've had on this podcast, but people <laughs> see it because I've said it in podcasts before. You guys are going to keep on hearing it, but it's it's like local radio back in the day. You turn on to that local radio station. Hey, I like these guys. Let's see what they have. And, you, hey, we got this person on. She's been in a whole bunch of stuff that you've heard. (laughs) Especially, like, a lot of the stuff that you've had. Like, it's stuff that, like, parents would see. But a lot, some other things that some nerdy gamers might not know is that I saw in your little reel... That it was a mod for Fallout 3 and a mod for Fallout 4 that you did voice acting for. Did? Oh my gosh. So yes, one of my earlier jobs back in the day. And that was so cool. I was like, wait, I get to voice in a mod? So 3D NPC. Um, oh, Chris Takahashi. Yes, Chris, Chris Takahashi. If, I hope you know. I remember you, Cass. He was awesome. He was a great director. And I remember getting the role for Dot in Dot's Diner. Yes! Which, oh my god, that was, I can honestly say, that was my first horror horror um, type of project. And I, I took it to theater. I just started using my theater background. And I'm like, okay, this character's going to do a shift. And if anyone sits and watches it, you start to notice a little bit 
I'm like, okay, something's going on with her. What's up? What's up? What's up? And everybody else did such an amazing job. I still kind of sit back and, you know, I I am still amazed because I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. It was in my little rinky dinky booth that I had at the time. With um, I was still learning how to use my equipment, and my audio was. But it was... it's so but... funny to hear that. But I I I've looked back on previous podcasts, and I've yeah. just wanted to just stop. I'm like, what 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 oh. was that? I thought that was good. What are you doing? What are you doing? Growth. Growth. You can say, hey hey hey. When I started, this is how I sounded. Yeah, look at me now. Listen, oh. listen, listen, listen. I started with a laptop, and then we went to a Nikon Cool Picks in my other podcast company. So it was struggle bus. <laughs> like, pile the stuff on top of the speaker and get yeah. all get all those DVDs. All right, is this the perfect height level? Okay, yo, yo, that's good. And we'll set it there. I, did you hit record? A hundred percent. I swear we hit record, and I was talking to the wall. You know what? I'm telling you right now. We all start somewhere, because pillow forts are the truth. Cover forts. Let's get it. Let's get it, guys. Come on. Like, it, you know, you, again, you, you have to start somewhere. And I think about, I've had so many different booths. I, my husband, at this point, he names each booth, like, a number. <laughs> that is so great. Frank, I think you know that. You gotta meet Vic. You gotta meet Vic. Vic is um, I love Vic. I met him. I was talking to him while Chris was talking to her. I mean, me and Vic had a great conversation. And you should yeah. have him. I'm just saying. You should. I would him. love to. Yeah. You, just, you put the time and you put the I want, money. I want our fans to hunt the Toros. Metaphorically. Metaphorically. <laughs> Don't Let hunt them. Where you're, what's your next What's your next, uh, if you can let us know, yeah. what's the last one you did? What, what's your next con, you know? What are you dropping? What are you picking up? You know? I, I will say, now we are on the road to buying a house this year. So oh, as, long, yeah, as long as it's not too far out. And um, the only thing that, because it hurts us when we have to find a hotel to stay, because that's money coming out of pocket. Okay. You yeah. know, we're already paying for a table to be there. So it's like you have to sell enough to cover the table, to cover the trip right. there situation. Right. So if we have to pay a hotel on top of that, that's money that gets taken away from us. And so, um, you know, I'm... It, we're both doing double the work, you know, we're working our day jobs and I know people are like, you're not full time anymore. Like, Jill, I'm still doing my voiceover work. <laughs> I just have to do it at after hours. And so, um, you know, that, so we have to ensure that it's going to be beneficial to us financially mm -hmm. and time wise. Sure. Um, there have been some conventions I, you know, cause he has plenty. Oh, Frank, I know you've been keeping up with him. His, his drawings. Oh, honey. He's got Absolutely. the prints. He's got the stickers. Yeah. They're ready to go. But right. we we were just like, look, if this isn't going to financially assist us, we're just not going to do it. So, mm. if the convention's pretty close, <laughs> and we don't have to pay for a hotel because we want some friends, then yes. <laughs> we'll do it that way. You know. It has to financially yeah. make sense. That's what Aline was saying a couple podcasts ago, Frank, is that you look at the cost at this and that, and it adds up, especially when you look at table costs. Not everybody is as generous to artists and creatives as the Great Media Comic Con. A lot of them, I was surprised, like $500. What? You know? And even Jim Cantonelli was telling me, hey, I'm looking at the cost of this, and it's not really matching up. I'm going to only do that. You know, it, it, it is a big thing for indie content creators to be able to know, hey, these guys are really good. Get in quick when they say we're looking, you know. So mm -hmm. we're going to get a lot more of, uh, you know, con creators as well as indie creators on because we want everybody to be able to hunt these indie guys because a lot of the stuff yeah. you're doing, it mm -hmm. is not formulaic like you get in the normal big stuff like Marvel and Disney and all that. You, you don't get that. You get a lot more creative and interesting stories mm -hmm. from like the shorts, like Mama – and mommy and me in the middle. Nailed it. Yeah. Well, I will say, um, 
I don't I don't have a debut yet. That's why I said I'm not breaking any NDAs, mm-hmm. but I'm hoping I wouldn't want you to. I'm not gonna be tied to that. Yeah. I'm hoping <laughs> to have some some uh, nice uh, announcements <laughs> soon. Awesome. And then the next month, we'll leave it at that. Um, but it, even if it's not the next month or so, I, I am working on something. Actually, right before we got, that's why I said I'm a little late because yeah. I had to, you know, finish some things up. I will say I wrote it. I just wrote this invoice and I cried. Ooh. Just typing out like, oh, my God, like I'm, I'm doing this. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But oh, yeah, I can't wait. So I, I can, we'll have you back I, on when you can talk about it. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, and trust me, there's nothing. I know people are gonna be like, "I'm gonna look for the post and everything." Oh, I ain't let that slip. I ain't let that slip. Uh-uh. Y'all can catch me I'm, over here and be like, "Man, I can hold water." I can hold water. Hold water. <laughs> yeah, somebody enjoys getting paid and getting yeah, work. Right. And I like getting work. I like getting paid, and I like keeping my job. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> but no, seriously, it's. it's I love how things, like you say, if things are coming full circle. Again, Frank, thank you so much for being you and oh, letting us do media. Me. Have it's been a lot of He's a treasure of Delco. Don't don't let him be all modest right now. He's a treasure of Delco, and he knows it. I got to pull myself together a lot just to hold it, to hold it together. You know? Yeah, no problem. You guys were wonderful. And you know what? I remember a good deed. That's so no good deed goes unpunished, so you know. It's true. Uh, if there's something that's going around, it's true. You know, so hey. Um, uh, the things that are going on, I'm going to throw and just uh, let y'all sort out what you want to sort out. I know um, Harrisburg is yearly. I don't know how well they do. I mean, it's right, right in your backyard. But uh, um, the Hershey's is doing one. And I don't really know all those areas past. I went to Altoona. But um, I don't know anything, like, pretty much outside of north of that, you know. Erie has one, and I don't know about growing all out there. But um, one day I want to I want to hit Pittsburgh. Yeah. But uh, I, would them to, I was at two, new, one new one. Um, okay. Blue Hen in Dover, which is a little uh, an hour south of Philly. So yeah. it's uh, – that is huge. That was, like, uh, kind of like in the yeah. same kind of uh, old Sears building that we were in at Harrisburg. Like that I got lost so many times. Like air conditioning, you know, and Wi-Fi. Yeah, it okay. was it, 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 real, real, really. You want to really go crazy as a little vacation? Um, Ocean City, Maryland, at the end. But let me tell you something. He's got a window of roughly a week. That's how fast. But you know, he's, it used to be one day. Now it's two days. So okay. let me tell you something. That is a place that is a, a man. That is a really, really super cool place to go. It was swamped. Uh, it was absolutely it was, swamped. Okay. Well, like I said, as, as long as it... I'll start right and y'all start out what y'all want to do. Oh, especially Ocean City is not that far. You know, I'm right in Delco. So, you yeah, can, you know, knows. it wasn't that far for me to drive, especially if you guys are in Jersey. I mean, I know it's a big state, but, you know, it's still not that bad. We're not get down in Jersey. There. We're in Harrisburg. Okay? Oh, I thought you were in Jersey. Oh, you're from Jersey. I'm from Jersey. Damn, that's where I locked onto that. That's my bad. <laughs> Mills, New Jersey. I, I, I locked on. That's why I was so confused. He was like, oh, Harrisburg. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> She just said yeah. Jersey. That's just where we live in right now. I'm, I'm catching up, fans. I'm catching up. I'm so hyper focused on this audio right now. I'm just making sure the ship stays afloat, okay? But <laughs> it's it's. But there's a few more. So hey, you know, um, yeah. look, I'll always throw you guys, you know, a heads up on what's going on. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, whatever exposure, I tell you, they're they're out there. So you know. Whatever you guys got. I mean, they love their certain ones. That last one in Dover, man, they love their anime characters. I mean, oh, yeah. They, they were like, holy moly. More than more than a bit, you know what? More than a bit than Ocean City. But Ocean City had the cosplayers. I mean, they had volumes of people. So they had a lot of really great cosplay out there in Ocean City, too. Like, there were so many really, really impressive cosplays out there. But. <laughs> You yeah. and the voice you do. They would love you, I tell you. I ain't lying. You know, you know, I always get worried when they're like, oh, like, what anime have you been in? I'm like, none yet. 
that. <laughs> oh, are you hiring? Right. Perfect answer. Perfect answer. There right. you go. You uh, hiring? The, voice, the voiceovers that you've done, you know, that's enough for some, a lot of them, you know? So. Well, I, I, I do not crap on anything. I, I love what I do. And, you know, voice I acting is great. Because yeah. actually, yeah. my first writing gig, my buddy Joe Palladino came to me, and he had this idea for Tales of uh, Tales of the Morgue. I'm all into tales. Um, tales of the Morgue, unfortunate deaths in unfortunate ways. It was an indie project we tried. It was two episodes, about three episodes, uh, three minutes each, and we got um, Stefan Johnson to do the voiceover for the narrator, which was the. Uh, uh, Undertaker y Yorick and I got him to I got to write episode two which was called Until Death which was obviously it was about a married couple unfortunate death um, it was the first time I got to actually create something and then experience mm -hmm. my words come to life and I cried no, I was like oh my god especially with Stefan's voice so yeah. good so good the guy is amazing. So amazing. I'm I'm so proud of him and the work that he's he's done. Um, I believe, and I want to get this wrong because I probably should look it up. But uh, what was it? Uh, uh Scott Pilgrim takes off. Okay. Okay. I, I want to say that. Now, now I feel like like no, Mary, you should probably look that up before. That way, I don't want to get you know my blessing. <laughs> uh, Pilgrim takes off animated series narrator. <laughs> narrator, please, Jesus. Oh, you know what? You are rude. You are rude. I said Scott Pilgrim takes off, and I love so much. They gave me Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Like, <laughs> narrator is come on, Jesus. Yes, announcer. Fine, announcer. Stephon Johnson. There we go. I was like, awesome. wait, 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 wait. I know better. Okay. I don't want him to be like, no, I didn't know. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I do want to put out there because, you know, we're talking about horror and macabre and all that stuff. Yeah. How, did you listen to Afflicted by Rusty Quill? No. No. Afflicted. Tanya Ransom and um, because I now have to look it up. Oh no, I don't want to forget her name. She was so sweet. So you are creating know. so much work for yourself this podcast. I am so much because honestly, I'm I'm so thankful of. All I know exactly how that is. You try to remember everybody, and there's one you person know. like right here. They're like, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I know, right? They're was like, okay, Marion, so you gonna when finish? When you when you gonna me? Think. There we go. I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> First off, everybody was amazing on the show, um, and I I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. So you know, we're having we're we're in Texas. That's where where it was, and um, there's a small town in Texas that ends up having this affliction of. Uh, Let's just say a curse or two, honey. And things are happening. Oh, my God. It is. It seems believable, especially for a small town in Texas. They definitely oh, yeah. got yeah. cursed. They definitely. This is a small town in Texas. You know? Yeah. So it was. It was. Definitely, um, I know it was amazing. I, I really felt like I got to stretch in my acting skills uh, what was going down. And there I, I don't want to ruin it because i want you guys to listen to it i want people to listen to it please go uh, listen to a flip net wherever you listen to podcasts uh okay. but again by uh Russell Quell. uh and send me the link and i will add it in the description of the podcast i will and also listen to their sister podcast nightlight um i boy i i narrate it um come on come on That's you're really having a problem with titles too I Sadie, Sadie Surprise, Sadie Surprise, there we go, I did the narration and as well as the, the character voice acting. <laughs> I know, my, my resume is, is gorgeous, by the way. Um, it's gorgeous, but you were right at the beginning of this, your brain is broke. <laughs> let them know, let us know, we will put some stuff out there with some uh, artwork too, I mean. 
Oh yeah. Any po- any images and stuff you want in the podcast, just send it over to me. I'll gladly add it in here, and uh, we'll make it yeah. sh- make sure that our fans get to hunt you. Oh, thank you. And because I I do want to promote my 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 clients' works, my friends' works, because again, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now with out them allow me the opportunity i mean obviously you know i did my best in the audition landed the role but still it was because they saw what i could give to the you know bring to the character and you know make it just more of a believable performance and so like i said i i know i need to do more marketing marketing but I have done so much. I am continuing to do a lot. Again, not breaking anything. Just (laughs) saying how exciting. Alluding to your excitement. I get it. Excitement. You know, so I can play. um, It's like my blurred background here. You're just like, no, it's blurred. I'm not showing you anything. But it's there. It's right over there. But um, but no, seriously, I'm 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 here. This is this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. I want to do this until hey, I get called up to the upper room. You know, like that's <laughs> I love what I do. I hope it's because of this podcast you get called up to the upper room because fantastic, fantastic stuff. You've shown your whole range. In this one podcast, they don't need to go to your IMDb. Just like, oh no, it was Tales of the Hunted. I don't know what episode this is going to be yet. That's that's for future Matt to figure out. Okay. But yeah. you just oh, just go to Tales of the Hunted. Yep, yeah, that. Yep, yeah, there you go. All my range in one episode. Just watch it. <laughs> I, you know, I didn't. Did I do? I know I did a mom character, but I also do a southern mother. So just to let y'all know, yes, mm-hmm. I voice children and the mom. Just like I did. That's and, a twofer. It is. Hold yeah. on, hold on. I can do this. The Marching Pride of Cadence High. You can watch it now on YouTube by NCS Animation. There we go. Yeah. Awesome. I know. I'm going to do this all day, but that's just me. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. I'm going to peruse. Got my ITB, got my website, www.marionsworld.com, and hey, YouTube. Check me out. We want everybody to hunt Marion right now. You're done the podcast. Go ahead and hop on over to her website. You want to hire her? Go ahead. Let her know. Hey, Marion, yeah. I, I have an anime for you. I think you have the perfect. I, I mean, if I, I I have a perfect character. And I'm like, I was watching it. I watch anime all the time. And I'm like, she could voice her. She could voice her. She could voice her. And now after the podcast, I'm like, oh, she could voice them all. Like, right. You know, you have the range, you have the impressive background and resume. So this is the entire reason our fans need to hunt you and your husband. He's going to be on in the future. Yes. Yes. We'll get him on as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Oh, well, thank you both so much. This has been um, Thanks for being a great guest. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I will end off the podcast with this. We like to end off. I usually have music, but I messed up my mixing board. So that is going to be added in post because this is the Tales of the Hunted podcast, gang. I am your host, Matthew Buzerell. Matthew Buzerell, the Matt Man. And above me in the box is one Mr. Frank Percy. And of course, our special guest, Marion Toro. You her. You need to watch her. You need to hire her because she's oh. the future of voice acting. And of course, until the next time, remember, oh. we love you. We miss you. We want to see you next time. Until then, game on, boys and girls. Bye bye. Bye. I don't know if you know, no. Frank knows. So we had a house, we had an apartment fire last October. Oh, wow. Like, in that July, remember, somebody hit our car, and the whole thing came off. Yeah, the, the yeah, farm bumper came off. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, on 4th of July. Oh, wow. When it rains, it pours. Yeah. It did, and yeah. then we were dealing with the, the, the property managers from that one apartment, so we were like, fuck this, you know, we're going to go to a new apartment. Weren't even there for barely two months, then the fire happened. Then we had a little bit of the in-laws, and then we were dealing with shit with them, just <laughs> till we got this place. And at that time, it was like we were we weren't doing really well financially because 
you know, just a lot of things kept hitting us, you know, such a lot of personal issues. And then I have a, I have a medical condition, so I have to constantly go and get checked up, which costs money. Yeah. So it was just like money's going yeah. out the door. Then I finally landed the day job, the day job that he has. Excuse me. So now we're at least both having some income. But then I got scared because I wasn't hearing back from any of my voiceover jobs. Mm. As soon as we got the booth up, I was landing work. Uh, back to back to that's back. Great. And I know I didn't really talk about it, and I'm sure Lamar's probably going to beat my ass. But, um, you know, I'm in uh, Captain Darrow uh, Part 2. Uh, oh, my God. Something from the best. Oh, my shit, 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 shit. You can look it up. I can add it in in the end credits. It's fine. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> he won't kill you. I will save you. Where's, this where's is my chat? superhero act of the day. Hold on. Where's the, oh, here's the chat. Because I'm like, wait. Okay, so let's do this first because at least it's in my head. So I got to flip it. I flip the podcast, right? Um, so this is – you should know from the title it's a horror podcast. So I'm not even going to do all that. That's too much work. Um, uh-huh. And then I said Nightlight. Can you just please send me – to the thingy thank you all right come on discord work with me all right so there's that aha all right actually i'm gonna give you the list so the night light which is also part of that uh, and i will let you know um i should probably like list the role i'm in uh what's your name what's your name emma no emma i feel like her name's emma is her name emma i'm gonna just i'll go with emma that's name. one of christopher bristow's kids it's a good name <laughs> that's awesome. Hold on. I don't remember which one it is. I know that's one of his kids. The redheaded one, you know? I've known them yeah. since 2008. Right. Okay. I'm still working it out. That's beautiful. I hope I hope whoever they are to get treated with kindness. Oh, they're great kids. Not- they're great kids. I just wish they were Sorry. still this tall. Ah, Gemma. Her name is Gemma. I think oh. saying Emma. Gemma. That's close. That's close. Uh, that's close. Oh my gosh. There's this scene that I do, and I I am just like going off. I am crying. I am screaming. I'm in my full emotion. And I loved it so much because I was taking my acting to task, and I just felt so liberated. Yeah, they did such a wonderful job. I just wish they would get more um what's the word I'm looking for? Like more attention. And, you know, I'm just like, guys, this is amazing. Okay, so I know it's Sadie Surprise, but I can't tell you which season because that's me. Um <laughs> so at least let me get these out of my head. Captain Zero. Um oh my god. Marion, you just can't do this today. Part two. Yep, not doing it today. Part two, Abyss. Yeah. Oh, is it just gonna send me the IMDb? Is is that what you're doing? That's the fine. Internet's Anywho, great. It is. I'm I'm in it with um Keith David, Angelica Ross, and Tracy Lissette. What? Yes, that face. Make that face. What? Make that face. There you go. <laughs> oh my God, Goliath. Goliath. Goodness. Goliath. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get my old LP so I can sweep all those names up. Get Keith David? Really? Get the hell out of here. First SAG after project. I got SAG after pay, y'all. Oh, my God. I am so happy for you. Dude, that's huge. Oh, my God. I know his voice because he's done, like, everything. Like Dude, he was just everything. in Hasbin Hotel. Like... You know what I mean? Like you hear his voice, be like, "Oh, I know that guy." Yeah. yeah. So I'm okay. So at least I'll all right. I'll post this so, so far. So that's what I have so far for that. Because I ha- in my mind, I'm like, "This is what you can talk about." I'm also in my head, like, "You can't talk about this." So, so, um, <laughs> I apologize for certain things I only remembered <laughs> a little bit ago, but this this right here is. It. Um, I also got noticed from Mermaid High. I forgot to bring that up as well. Um, at the con, at the Great Media Comic Con, they were like, "Oh my God, you're Oceana!" And I was like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Wait, you watched the show? Thank you. Did you buy the toy?" <laughs> I hope you guys bought the toy. Not that I get money for that. Thanks, Ben Master. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm. I'm also trying not to shit on. Did you said you do did one for 
for Crayola? Um, yeah. Um, I am the voice of mm, Ayana the Rhino. Yes, the diva. Ayana the Rhino, honey. Yeah, that that's on. Uh, I think it's on the beginning of your IMDb uh, on that video. That's it's like a, one of the first ones, and I'm like, okay, all right. I love the sass. I love the sass. I imagine yeah. a rhino would have that sass. She yeah. does. You know, the, I will say this: when I did my session with Crayola, the executive producers were on the call, and they, I remember hearing them say oh i didn't know she would have a southern accent i'm gonna tell you right now i choked up because i was like holy shit they're gonna fire me like i i just thought whoa maybe they don't want to want her to have a southern accent and that's just what came out with the character Mm -hmm. you know um that i'm doing and they were like we love it (laughs) i intended that the whole time you're welcome. You know, now my, I can't see them. I cannot see them. I can only hear them. But when I did the role, and I'm saying the lines, and I'm hearing them crack the fuck up in my mind, I'm like, yes, yes, that's right. Like, and I'm I had to sit on it for months. I couldn't say anything, Ooh. and I was so I was so like in my feelings, like, oh god. I said, I can't believe this. I'm voicing in a Crayola. Freaking Crayola IP. Mm-hmm. Like, what is happening right now? Yeah. But, yeah, I, I can say that. Yeah, I got to hunt you on I, eBay and get it to get her autograph, you know? Yeah. She just did that. Yeah. As, no. as well as all your fans. You'd be like, well, here goes another thing. Yeah. I got to buy in my Amazon basket. All right, here we <laughs> go. You know what I I do have so I'll admit I do buy my toys and so for the the Ayanas I will sign it and I and I sell it for like ten dollars. That's that's really it. Like you that's awesome for a fan, especially for like a parent going by like ah, I'll get you this. Yeah, honestly, for me, I'm like get it now. You don't know how big I'm gonna get. You better take this. Get exactly. it, get it at the entry level price. It's only going up from here, people. It's like the stock market. Let's go, let's go. It's going up. Yep. Buy now, yeah. sell high. I gotta, yeah. Honestly, you guys make me want to do videos because I'm like, wait, I'm actually not busted. I can actually probably do a video. Oh, sure. So, yeah. And I, I wanted to talk about what is my. In, I have an inspiration um, playlist. Okay. I totally forgot that I had set up. And it's on again by Alicia Keys and Kendrick Lamar at the end Ooh. of the, uh, what was it? The Amazing Spider Man 2. Mm-hmm. And the lyrics just speak to me. Mm-hmm. And it just gets me fueled up when I'm feeling, when I'm, when I'm doing what they call the imposter syndrome. Yes. Okay. Because that, because it, look, I know people are like, you are you crazy? Have you seen all the work you've done? And it's not that at all. It's that I've done all this work. Can I keep it up? Yeah. I got it. Yeah. It, it, it's like it's like holy shit, I did this. Mm-hmm. Can I can I can I rise above it? And cuz you you get caught up in your feelings, something ridiculous or stupid will happen and then it's like it 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 does. It will completely shadow literally what you just accomplished and in real time be like you ain't good enough. Mhm. And so I'm just like, nah, I'm putting this on. And then what was it? Um, was, is it? I don't know if he goes by Dance at the Disco again, but um, um, High Hopes. Mm-hmm. I listened to that. You gotta have high, high hopes for a living. Shooting for the stars, we're not gonna make a killing. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I think about that because I've been broke. Like, I've been on welfare. You know, I've worked three jobs and on i had my ebt card i've been there so it's like i know what it's like to starve i know what it's like to be hungry and but that passion for just being creative has never gone anywhere Mm. and even though i didn't get the support i would have appreciated growing up with you know um, (laughs) i'm still happy that i'm like oh yo who can say that they have a significant other a spouse even 
who's not just your best friend, but your supporter. My husband built this down. That's huge yeah. support right there. It That's huge, huge support, support right there. He designed my cards. Uh, you know, he, he, I know I'm trying not to cry about it. He, he drew, he, drew, he draws the characters I voice. And he just, he made me cry in the car. He just drew the character that I'm voicing now. Again, I'll keep it to myself. But I was like, this is so unreal. Like, mm -hmm. I can go onto this massive website and be like, oh my God, I voiced that character. And I, but it's, I'm in awe of that. But when he drew that character, like, I was sitting mm -hmm. there falling in the car. Like, dude, I gotta drive. <laughs> and then... It's probably not the best timing, but that I feel I feel like that was his goal. Like, oh, she's totally yeah. gonna cry. Hey, let's do it when I can die. Hey, look at that. Yeah, it's probably oh, not no. the best timing, Vic. It's not. You could have picked a better time, bro. Yeah, she'll cry at this. Amazing artist, and he does video games. Like uh, mm -hmm. that one that I saw. Side one. Oh, oh my god! Hello. Let me do that. Um, Toro, Toro, I got this. I got this. Come on, Mary. Toro comic. It's, it's <laughs> my your legacy. I asked, like, yeah. why didn't you, like, promote this? Oh, yeah. Talking all about yourself on the podcast, huh? Mm. Okay. It's okay, Vic. She mentioned the sound booth. You're covered. Yeah. You're covered. <laughs> Here, let me, let me show you this because I like how some douchebag out there did something called emergency monster squad like yeah we knew what you were trying to do so here we go i voice I voice a myriad of characters in this one but this is my husband's pride and joy he has been working on this for ooh, 10 years oh no, wow 11 11 years um okay so emergency monster team gorgeous monster women who woke in a hospital by the way and, but it's a mystery and a fighting game because we got to oh. figure out who's fucking with the monsters. Okay. Ooh. So, yeah, emergency yeah. monster team. And I voice the main character, um, Nadelle. She is a berserker type character, and she's also an amputee. And her, um, her prosthetic arm turns into a giant syringe. Okay. So the Del I got the names of the characters, so I feel I feel like I these are my You nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nadelle Pierce. <laughs> it's her name. And um Le I'll be here all week. It's fine. Yeah. Lenora <laughs> Ravencroft. Ravencroft, that's her that's what I named her. Well let me just say this for now. And Lenore. And here you go. I can post this here. There it is. There you go. I was about to say, you better post it. So the hubby did all the background work. He drew all the backgrounds, all the characters. Oh. So even though he's using RPG Maker, mm -hmm. he made this his own. Oh, yeah. And you can see it from the main page. And he's super. He is super. It's, hey, look up. Um, uh, Victoro. Uh, what, what is his tag? Um, it's, not, it's not Victoro. No, What's it's tag um, Shadow Boxer. Shadow Boxer. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You guys look up Shadow Boxer on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell you, some some more awesome work. Yeah. yeah, let me do this. Let me get my hubby, my baby, my Shadow Boxer. So wait, are we still recording? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting all this. Oh, we are. Yeah, I'm getting all this. Yeah. Right, right. Chop it up. At least Matt does, you know. Oh yeah, I'm, I'll I'll be yeah. in the I'll be in the cutting room, you know, later on. He was like, "Here's some bonus footage from the podcast." Yeah, uh, and there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Like Jackie Chan, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, look at that! See, my husband is on top of it. He's got the games. He's got the merch. He's got the comics. Can you donate? <laughs> yeah. As well, like uh, you can also just give me money. I'll take that. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't tell people how they can. Just find me in public and give me money. I'll. I will accept right. it. You know, I'm not right. one of those weird germaphobes. Just hand me a bundle of cash and say, "Keep doing it." It'll also confuse everybody around you. Like, what the hell just happened there? Like, it's fine. He's a supporter of what? 
You don't need to know. Create. I'm just like, yeah, he has a chance to be like, I, I know he gets I slept on. I don't know why he gets slept on, but I can tell you right now, he is phenomenal, amazing, really a wonderful yes. guy. And he's great to talk to. So I'm like, uh uh. Please have him on. I just need y'all to know. No. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> We will, Please and ask. we'll have you back on. We'll, we might even want to have you both back on. Um, well, well, he'd I have to be on to and then be back on. But you get yeah, the idea. I talk a lot. I, you're just gonna watch me gush over him because I I know I talk a lot, and I don't want to suck up the air in the room. I want to let him have his. <laughs> That's fair enough. That's fair enough. That's also no. If you do this, I mean, I'll I'll sit by in mm. the back. Yeah. Just talk loud, so loud enough so the mic can pick up. That's great. I'd love that. Yeah. Have oh, have you not met me? You know. <laughs> Marion, let him speak. <sighs> <laughs> this has been an absolute blast, Marion. I got to cut this off here because I got to go to the bathroom. But we are definitely going to have your husband and you back on at another time. Of course, darling. Again, thank y'all both. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yes. And I can't wait until you can talk about that new project because I definitely want to hear about please it. Come back. Let us know that whenever it drops, let us know. Absolutely. All right. Until next time, right. have a good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Peace. Until then, game on! Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.